This could be a really important question or a really unimportant question because that's the easy part of it, isn't it? I make my living, it's what I do, do it full time, bam, that is an artist. But there's another element to it, definitely. I've come up with five things in summary, if you like, of how to be an artist. Brand new day so it's always a chance to turn it all around isn't it when we get a brand new day and I really love that about mornings and I think that's why I always say that's my power time so I'm about to jump in with my fairy art my task for today is I'm in the business as you know of painting fairies right now very serious business working with the fairies and so I need to get to it because she needs some wings and a flower Life is very bizarre and absurd at times, isn't it, with what we're called to do. But this is work for me, so it's very serious, very important. And the thing about being an artist is that you have to make art, because if it's how you make a living, well, let's talk about the definition of an artist maybe some more. It sometimes comes into question, doesn't it, that what is an artist and am I an artist? And, and people have a really sometimes a little bit of a confusing issue about it where they feel a little bit like it's not as cut and dried, for example, as say when I, you know, went to teacher training school and got my postgrad degree and then was a teacher. Nobody would question that I was a teacher because I went to college, got my qualifications and I was teaching. So I was doing it and I was earning my living at it. That's a little bit different than being an artist, isn't it? And it, it's, it sometimes feels like a little bit of a grey area for some people. Suffice to say, I think, you know, it's really quite clear and quite cut and dried. If somebody is practising their artwork full time and making a living out of it, then I would definitely qualify that as being an artist. And I don't think anyone would argue with me for that. So that's not really in question. I think the, the thing in question that people often message me about and comment on is, you know, I don't feel confident to say I'm an artist. I don't feel like a real artist. What is a real artist? It's not quite as clear cut as say having a, you know, being a policeman or a teacher or something or a nurse or something like that. So what if somebody is practicing art part time? What if it's more a hobby for them? What if they're not making a living out of it? What if they've had a six month gap from making art or even a few years? Are they still an artist and should they still call themselves an artist? Do you have to have gone to college and got qualifications and a degree in art in order to be called an artist? So there's all those kind of questions that I get asked in the comments and messages. And I think it's a really interesting question because it is one of those professions or you see, profession is another funny word. So profession, professional, hmm. That can make it seem really unaccessible and elitist. And yeah, I don't, I don't really like it. So I don't think there's any qualifying factors where you have to have a training, you have to have a degree, you have to have been to college, you have to have done A, B or C. You have to have sold a painting and you have to be making some profit. You have to be making some money out of it. So I don't think that any of that is necessary in order to say that 
I am a proper artist. I think for me personally, I have always had that feeling that I'm an artist because I remember creating art when I was very young, when I was a little girl. I used to paint my holly hobbies and these little, I used to have this little soap tin with an oriental lady on it and I used to paint that. I used to paint things from my Kate Greenaway book and my Betsy Clark posters, so all those kind of cutesy, big eye kind of faces and fairies and that kind of thing, which I, which... I still do now. So it's been a very bit important part of my development. And, you know, I was praised for my drawings. I was, you know, celebrated in my family. I was celebrated at school. So I remember doing, this is probably my earliest memory of being celebrated at school was when I did a, a painting of a snowman. So it must have been around Christmas time or winter time. And I remember everybody painted this snowman and it was kind of like with a process that the teacher had demoed. So they demonstrated the process and then we went off and did our own snowmen. And my snowman turned out really well and the teacher thought it was fab and, you know, showed everyone in the class. And, I, you know, I, so I started at a very young age to feel like a proper artist. I was an artist. And when I was deciding, you know, what to do with my career, how I was going to make money, because obviously it's a well-known fact that artists, you know, the starving artist, artist, we don't make money, do we? Which is an absolute untruth. That's an absolute untruth. I know lots of artists that make a full-time living out of doing what they do, and I do as well. That's a complete fallacy. Anyway, at that point, I didn't know that. I wasn't the wise Wendy I am today. So I thought I'd have to have a proper job. And so I realised that I wanted to do something creative, and I was going to sort of follow the path of, of my auntie, which was hairdressing, which I did for a year. That's a whole other story. Anyway, Suffice to say that, that in my early days, I always had that confidence of feeling like a proper artist. But I appreciate that not everybody has that and not everybody starts young. There are lots of artists that start later on in life. Does that mean they're not proper artists? No, not at all. I don't believe you have to be practicing full time. I don't believe you have to be making your living at it. I don't believe you have to be the best at it either. So, you know, I'm not the best in the world by any means. And I do what I do. I paint what's from my soul and from my heart. I paint authentically from within. I go wrong a lot. I make mistakes. I'm not very good at painting hands. <laughs> That's my thing. I practice, but I'm still, you know, I still struggle with, with, with stuff around it. I'm still doing, you know, my self-training. So I, I do little projects for myself and continue along my training. Just because I'm not at university anymore doesn't mean to say I stop learning. I'm learning every single time I create. And so I'm on an artist's path. I'm on that journey. It? It's a grey area to think about, but yeah... You could be an artist and something else, and something else and something else. So it doesn't define just who you are, does it? Who we are inside is not necessarily what we do, although it does help give us our identity, our purpose, our joy. And let's face it, every single human being alive is creative. We're not just talking about art, painting, drawing. It could be music, writing, dancing, all the arts and so. being creative is really important for our health and well-being isn't it because it's how we make decisions it's how we sort our problems out it's how we process things it's where we find joy and pleasure which is a really important part of well-being as well and so there's so many elements that come together with our creativity so maybe the question shouldn't be am i an artist but it should be more of an affirmation to say i am a creative being Anyway, thoughts down below, let's have a conversation. I love that about the YouTube because we can actually have a conversation. And yes, I do read the comments and I, and I answer and comment back on as many as I can. Anyway, this isn't getting fairy wings painted, is it? So, hmm. Creativity starts and comes from within. A seed, spark, a desire that wants to appear in the world. Then we have this important job and some apprehension, nervousness, and perhaps pressure to actually put something out there, to make it visible. The way I see it, there are two main roads on this journey. 
one is doing and one is not doing. And also I think it's okay and natural to ebb and flow on both sides. So once we have the seed, the spark that wants to appear, we may experience and we probably will experience a certain amount of resistance and also the fear starts to kick in, doesn't it? So the fear of failure and the fear of rejection. So one of the paths we might take, the path of not doing, might lead us to waiting, waiting to get inspired, waiting for the divine muse to knock on our door. And yes, that's there sometimes, but rarely does it happen. We're waiting to be in the mood, waiting to feel like it, waiting for everything to be perfect. Then we hit the fear, the fear of rejection, self-sabotage, the big resistance, self-deception, oh, and making excuses. We hit creative block and it, it's absolutely paralyzing. We have an insecurity and that just makes us procrastinate even more. And then we get frustrated, depressed. We have really harsh self-judgment. It can make us feel like giving up altogether. We end up sitting there, busy, doing nothing, fake busy, if you like, a fake productivity. It's not moving us forwards in the direction we want to go. So obviously, if, for example, you wanted to get good at drawing, you have to actually make the drawings. You end up on this route by giving up and the feeling of, I failed. So what's the other road then? What's the road of doing? Instead of waiting to get inspired, we start by action. And by doing the action, we actually, within that process, find the spark and the muse might start to keep us company. If we can concentrate, try our best, put the effort in, this is the perspiration part, the sweat, Ideas and insights will appear along the way. The mystery starts to happen, the magic, perhaps divine inspiration, mixed in with our natural talents and our learned skills. This self-discipline in balance with your authentic inspiration creates the action of doing it. Showing up is key, even when you don't get much achieved. Keep trying, tripping up, keep going, do your very best. Picasso said, inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. Once the work has begun, the muse comes to visit, the sparks start to flow, you enter into the zone, experience the magic, and inspiration will strike. Do it even if you're not in the mood. Allow yourself to make really bad art, make mistakes, go wrong. Push yourself to make progress and improve at what you're doing and not just simply repeat what you have been doing every day. So for example, for me at the moment, I'm trying to improve at hands. So I'm practicing and learning skills to help me with that. Seeing myself on my journey as I am, as much of a work in progress as my creations are, so the main intention here is that I improve my art and progress from my last piece that I made. So I'm constantly moving forwards in my process. This is the road that leads to not just thinking it, but making it visible. The creation is born out there in the world for others to see. I did it. So I thought I would ask what you think about the definition of an artist and whether, you know, people are having a trouble labelling themselves and that kind of imposter syndrome thing and all that. So I've put out on my Instagram and my community post on the YouTubes and it'll be really interesting to see what replies we get on there. It's nice to have a conversation about these things. That's what I love. Okay, I've just read one already and it is, the definition of an artist is if you dip your, t your paintbrush in your coffee. <laughs> so that could be my favourite already.
like that one. So I need to go home now, I think, and I've got work to do at home on my laptop. So I'm gonna go and type up the little blog post type update. I do one a week on the Patreon. And yeah, I did get asked as well in last week's comments about the podcast. That is in the pockets tier on the Patreon. That's where I do a little podcast update every month. I do that. So that's where you'll find that if you are interested. I was planning, I really, really was planning on tidying up today, but I didn't get to it. So it's still a pickle, yeah. Painting fair it is more important though. Cheers to you if you're having your cup of tea in the morning. I haven't done anything yet because I've been pondering on this question of proper real artist. Am I a proper artist? Am I a real artist? I feel uncomfortable calling myself an artist. There is a definition in there, isn't there? And I think there's different levels of and different layers of a definition of any one word, if you like. And I think the other difficulty that, that perhaps people are having with this is it's all tied in so closely to our identity, isn't it? So yes, we're all human beings. Sorry, Mr. Gerber, I keep sort of bashing you there my uh, self-expression with my hands. So yes, we're all human beings and what goes with that is that we are all creative because we all have that element to us. But at the same time, does that mean everybody's an artist? And for me, I've been thinking about this, I woke up at three o'clock and it reminded me of a film I watched a few months ago with Ben Affleck. I think it was called The Tender Bar. The Tender Bar? I wrote it down. It was called The Tender Bar and uh, I, I remember really enjoying this film as well so it's a little film recommendation for you there. It's kind of like a quite an uplifting coming of age kind of film and in that Ben Affleck's character was talking about what I was saying yesterday basically which was about you know when you go to college and you get your degree in say being a teacher does that make you a teacher? If you go to get an art degree, does that necessarily make you an artist in the same way that if you go to law school, you would be a lawyer? Because it's tied into profession and making a living and being a professional in the sense of the word of, you know, acting responsibly and that kind of element of profession. So there is that side of it. So you could say in the sense of the word, what you do for a living, am I an artist? Do I do that for a living? That, that's a different meaning than, for me anyway, the way I'm thinking about it. And I do think it's important because, as I said a minute ago, you know, it's all about our identity, how we see ourselves. So it's confidence and self-esteem as well. So very important connections there to make, you know, with our own sense of self, if you like. That element of it, you well, I'm creative, so therefore I'm an artist. I think that's a different way of looking at it to, to the profession side, to the I make a living at doing it. I think this is another side, another way of looking at the word artist as a definition. And I think that's where the grey area and the confusion comes in, doesn't it? And I think that's where people sometimes might feel uncomfortable saying, I am an artist, if they're not necessarily doing it for their full-time job and making a living out of it. And that's where I think that people, without a shadow of a doubt, can call themselves an artist, you know, whether you're doing it part-time, whether you're doing it a little bit, whether you're doing it not to make your living, but just for the pure, the pure joy of, of doing it, of creating art. And I think I just wanted to finish off what I was saying about that film, The Tender Bar, where Ben Affleck's character was going on about the fact that, you know, you can have a qualification and then you are that job, that profession. But what he said in the film, which I didn't mention here, was with being an artist, you have to prove it to yourself. So you can go to art school or not go to art school. 
I don't think that's relevant. I think that artists don't have to go to art school, by the way. I have mentioned that before. Anyway, back to the film. So yeah, with being an artist, you have to prove it to yourself. I think that's why I remembered something in my brain sparked and this film came up again because I think, you know, it is the important thing. We have to prove it to ourselves, don't we? And please do, you know, let's continue this conversation in the comments down below as well. So I'm sure I've missed out loads of important points and different perspectives and ideas. So I don't claim to be an expert on this issue by any means, big disclaimer there. Just think it's important to have the conversation about it. Anyway, back to what I was saying about where I'm sitting in the whole conversation. And I think for me, the definition of an artist and the deciding factor, if you like, is does someone make art? Because if somebody's artistic, but they are not necessarily making art, for me, that's not necessarily they are behaving as an artist, if that makes sense. Does that sound right? Do I agree with that? Do I actually agree with what I'm saying? It's always a good question to ask ourselves, isn't it? And many people have, you know, really strong ideas about it. And I think, you know, what's tied up in not just your identity, but being an artist has all these other connotations, doesn't it? This sort of, sort of romanticised, idealistic, rosy-coloured specs kind of view of what an artist is. And, you know, I mean, I can vouch, being an artist is really hard work. It's not an easy path to take. And, you know, I'm sure any of you out there who make art, whether or not you consider yourself an artist or not, know how hard it can be to actually, you know, get in the zone, get over creative blocks, improve your practice, get rid of self-doubt, imposter syndrome, being your own worst critic, which stops you even starting in the first place, and all that stuff that goes along with being a creative. It can be really hard. And we're not just talking about painting and illustrating here. You know, dancing, singing, writing, all the arts is what I'm referring to here in this conversation, actually. You know, creativity is not reserved just for artists. Creativity is for everybody. So that's really important. And we're all creative as human souls, human beings. We all have that creativity. And we might show that creativity in many different ways, which can be gardening, how we arrange our houses, how we make a bed, how we make a meal. So this isn't about limiting or excluding anyone with some kind of label, if that makes sense. I really disagree strongly with that. I don't like labels. I don't like people feeling like they can't call themselves something because someone else says it's not a real artist. Yeah, I don't like that at all. You know, and maybe some of us are aspiring artists. I mean, I'm an aspiring all sorts of things. I'm an aspiring writer for definite because I'm not a writer. I do write, but I wouldn't consider myself a writer. I do have times when I do write, though. And I'm an aspiring writer because I'd definitely like to do some more writing, whether or not in published works or out there. It doesn't make a difference, but I consider myself an aspiring writer, writer, if that makes sense. So maybe some of us are aspiring artists and there's nothing wrong with that, is there? There's nothing wrong with having that dream. And at the end of the day as well, you know, it's a label. It doesn't really matter. I think how we live our lives compassionately, with grace for ourselves and for others. You know, I talk about all the time, you know, keeping your own cup full so you can give from the saucer. Keep, it, keep your cups overflowing, your self-care matters. And the way that we think about ourselves, the way that we consider ourselves, the way that we judge ourselves, where we identify, it's all an important part of self-care, self-esteem, self-worth, am I worthy? This could be a really important question or a really unimportant question, completely depending on how and where you sit and you're looking at it. And I think if you're really confident in who you are as a person, then it probably doesn't matter too much, actually. It's, but perhaps if you're not quite solid and secure in who and what you are and your identity and you have a big dream, but it's not manifesting yet. So maybe then in that case, there's more tied up in this whole thing than just saying it as a profession, if that makes sense. Because that's the easy part of it, isn't it? I make my living, it's what I do, do it full time, bam, that is 
an artist, but there's another element to it, definitely. So after thinking about this a lot, I've tried to summarise all of it into five easy points of what the definition of an artist actually is. Okay, here goes. It's not really steps because it's a, not really a step-by-step -step approach, but it's kind of qualities to have. So let's have a look. I wrote them down because, yeah, that's just, uh, it keeps my thoughts clear. I'm very professional. <laughs> So firstly, a note on authenticity. So I really believe it's important to create from your insides. You know, what's inside your own heart and soul? What is authentically you? What's your joy? What creates that spark? And follow that. It is all about creating what you love. So point number two is a note on inspiration. So getting inspired by others and how we go about that and whether it's creators of the past in history or whether it's contemporary creators. I think as long as we're not honing in on one or two creators and just imitating what they do, which is okay. I mean, we've talked about this in a whole other video, which I'll, I'll link somewhere. So if it was for educational purposes, there's no problem in that at all. And you're citing the artist and, and this, that and the other. We don't have a problem with that. But I think as you're moving forward through your own processes and finding your own style in whatever art form it is, then honing in on one or two creators is, is more of an imitation than an inspiration. So stay within the healthy inspiration, but definitely find your sources of inspiration. I think most importantly, have multiple sources of inspiration, walking in nature, music, artists, social media even, and just go around the, the everyday business of living and find your sources everywhere you go. And that also includes, and I say this a lot, but also includes going within, so finding what's within to come out as well. The third necessity that I believe you need as a creator, as an artist, is to keep learning your craft. You want to become a master of your craft. So keep growing and going and get over that perfectionist self. Allow yourself to be unsuccessful. Allow the mistakes. Allow the bad art. Have a space for that. Keep learning. Keep moving forwards and push yourself to make improvements, even when it's hard. Upgrade your knowledge, wisdom and skills. It's no good practicing every day if you're practicing the same, same level and you're not learning anything new and you're not moving yourself forwards. The aim here is to master your craft. And to help you get there, ask other people for their opinions and critiques. I often ask James what he thinks and it's really, really helpful. And if you're really brave, you can put your stuff out on social media and ask for feedback as well. That's really, really helpful. No. The fourth thing is creating balance. So allowing the ebb and flow, allowing yourself some time to rest and restore and recharge your batteries. Allow the rests and breaks so that you can recharge your creative juices. Allow some quiet time, like the spaces on a gallery wall in between the paintings, the spaces that allow the artwork to breathe. And finally, above all else, and this is what I truly believe makes an artist, remember you have to actually do the work. As many of you said in the comments, you have to actually be creating artwork to be an artist or music or writing or whatever it is. My final thoughts from all this week and everything I've been thinking about is how much I really need to take breaks and remember about the ebb and flow which naturally takes place. Giving myself proper time to recharge, regroup, get re-inspired. Another thought that popped up in my mind this week was, can doing what you love be a trap? So if you go on the not doing road, can you feel trapped in your own frustration and paralysed by the fear of even starting if that's what you've chosen to do but you can't do it because you're stuck in the fear and so you need to bring in the self-balance and the inspiration and make sure that you can consistently keep going with the action part and that can be really challenging to stay consistent on that path. I've had a book on my reading list for quite a while and I think it's going to be my next step in exploring this issue a little bit more deeply. 
It's a book by Stephen Priestfield called The War on Art. So I'm going to be reading that over the next few weeks and, yeah, seeing if I get any new insights into it, which I will, of course, share on here with you. And do, of course, remember, we are all unique creative beings. Go with your own flow. Find effective ways to counterbalance the resistance. Have self-compassion. Trust your intuition, your heart, your soul messages. And above all else, be brave. <laughs>